cut off your music just like that. It's like, there it was, we're listening to all those lovely songs and then suddenly, whew, they're gone. Yeah, it reminds me of home where if I put anything of mine on, it just gets taken off very quickly. Who does that? Daughters, wife, <laughs> anybody who's but passing do you, through. Do you go around going, shall we listen to some of my music No, I don't, now? actually. To be fair, I do have an intensive time after the album's finished of listening to it, and then I don't touch it again, so... So, uh, uh, any, are there any songs...? Cos, obviously, we heard some ones there that everyone's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, mm. I remember that, I remember that. And you used to know... I used to know all the words to them. Um, where they just go, this is never allowed to be played in the house again. No, but, I mean, I, I genuinely, genuinely, there isn't much of my music in the house anyway. We tend to... Sorry, um, we tend to listen to other stuff, but I've got songs that I probably wouldn't listen to where I sound a bit twee or... Go on. No, 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 I can't... Your songs? Yeah, just oh, go a on. thing. Go on, know. just one. And then you can tell me the one you really, really are proud of. I, I'm proud of all of them, but um, there's ones where it's just the sound of my voice. I can't think of one off the top of my head, because uh, it might be somebody's favourite at home. But <laughs> there's times when, <laughs> where I try to sound sort of soulful and I just sound like a little kid barking. Yeah, that sort of thing. You're going to have to tell us off air which one yeah. it is. I think that this... There's a sort of... Is there a sort of nostalgic feel to the new album? A little bit of sort of... A little bit of melancholy, sort of thinking about how things could be a bit better? That's the feeling I'm getting. Yeah, I think there, are, there always is with my writing. Uh, I always seem quite melancholy, and then when you meet me, I'm the opposite sort of thing. But I think... Yeah, with these lyrics, uh, I probably get myself into a bit of a melancholy state when I'm writing the lyrics. The music is supposed, supposed to sound more joyous and more, you know, yeah, melodic, I suppose. OK, help us with the writing <coughs> bit, then. Where yeah. are you when you when these sort of melancholy lyrics are coming out? Where, where, where are you? What's, what's occurring? I'm away in Holland uh, with my wife. We're cycling from pub to pub. We pick a, a, a small town in Holland. We don't go to the cities. And we'll cycle out, and I'll find somewhere on my phone. I say that looks quite nice, and we'll cycle out there, and I'll sit there for three hours, two or three hours, uh, drinking, and Linda's reading, and then she says you should go home now because we have to, one, we have to cycle. We don't want to cycle, don't. But also, you've reached that point where um, you know you don't want to write anymore. And it's really, really enjoyable process. Yeah, I absolutely love doing it. It's fascinating. Pub culture is like, has woven into your life because we've spoken about it a lot. I, yeah. I'm interested, we're going to hear it, and then I'm interested in fish and chips as well, yeah. how this plays into it. Let's yeah. have a listen. I, I always call her Kunk. I always <laughs> no, how did you get... What's her, what's her name? Diane Morgan. Diane Morgan, that's so, it. How yeah. did you get Diane Morgan in on I that? just contacted her and asked her... I think we follow each other on social media and just thought I'll try and... Persuade her, and she she did it, and she was brilliant, and as was Pierce as well, who was in it. So yeah. Uh, fish, sorry, I was going to say, so fish and chips. You, it's almost like you get inspiration from the everyday. Yeah, I mean that particular song was sort of about the journey we make uh, through life via a small scenario of I'm just going out for to get you fish and chips, and then getting distracted on the way home, and finally arriving, and perhaps being forgiven. Um, and for getting back late. to... Yeah, for being like. I was talking about how pubs intertwine with your life, and you've done things like, um, I think when you turned 60... Yes. ..and I'd say that, you know, you put some money behind the yeah. bar for people in, in yeah. pubs and everything like that. You've always kind of been very much that the fans... There needs to be some affordability... Yeah. ..to an access of to course, music. Yeah. You'll know, you'll be very aware, dynamic pricing yeah. has come into the fore now yes. after the sale of Oasis tickets, but also right. generally, yeah. you know, and just how music fans, whether there is a barrier now. What are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, with, there won't be any uh, dynamic pricing associated with my tickets. And you have control over that, I have that, control do you? over that. Uh, and uh, although I'm not blaming other artists, I think if you want control of that, you have to sort of be at the meeting you know, the meetings to decide ticket prices, you know, the actual amount it costs, whether there's dynamic pricing. So you're part of those, usually, the I'm part the of those, is. and I'm represent... There's uh, the promoter there, my manager there, and there's me. And, obviously, I represent myself and my musicians, but I also feel as though fans aren't represented there. So when I go there, I always think of people I know, could they afford tickets? So I, I also argue low quite often, and the promoter will argue it's a bit higher. Uh, and it's the same with everything. If you want uh, a good deal for your fans, you've got to be in the room. 
And it's the same with T-shirts, for example, you know, which are on sale at concerts. I make sure they're not 70 or 80 quid. To do that, you've got to be at the meeting, that's all I say. I'm not, you know, calling anybody out for it, but the more involved you are in those sort of processes, the more likely you are to be able to keep the price down. Uh, I like pootling around on my bicycle. Could I just tag along when, you know, I like the <laughs> idea of your trip in Holland. Would it matter if you just had someone else? Just it, the... w it would be an absolute pleasure. And, it, and it's... I go think... slowly. Do you go... Yeah, really slowly, oh, yeah. I like that. And stop as well at oh, ventures getting better and, and better. have a look, yeah. Um, and... Throw a cheese and pickle sandwich in and you're The sandwiches, sold. you take any, or you stop and have something as you can. Stop at, and have, uh, you know, like a toasted sandwich or something like that. But cheese and pickle is a, sounds like a good addition to me. I think I might... I'm completely uh, on board this project. It's really, really good fun. I'd recommend other people do it as well, you know, because it's not the lyric writing, that's the, the painful Who side. Who knows? Of it. it might inspire well, it people. It could inspire yourself, yeah. Part I can picture it now. There's honestly, a new I can duo. The two, you and your wife's trying to get rid of... Going a bit, oh, still there. <laughs> <laughs> Turn left. <laughs> no, we, we wouldn't try to lose you, honestly. I think you might. You're being too nice. Yeah. You're being too you nice. Paul Heaton, it's today. always a joy having Thank you on you the sofa. Me, Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks. Uh, Paul's new album, The Mighty Several, is out tomorrow.